I'm Janet Prey with Islander Sewing Systems, and I'm here to teach you the perfect bound buttonhole today. So let's just get right to it. First of all, before you put a buttonhole in, whether it's a machine buttonhole or a bound buttonhole, do interface it. And I like fusible interfacing. So I've interfaced this, and I'm just using a small sample, and I think it's a great idea for your first one. Um, even when I'm doing bound buttonholes, I'll stop and do a practice one before I do them on the garment. Okay, now, the way we mark this is with thread. And the reason we mark it with thread is because we need the marking very precise to get a perfect bound buttonhole, and we also need to be able to see it on both sides. So before you get started, you know that on your pattern, the buttonhole is marked, both ends of the buttonhole. So I've marked both ends of the buttonholes. And let's say this was down the front of a jacket. I would do the stitching all the way down the front of the jacket. So wherever the end, the first, uh, the beginning of the buttonhole would be, I might take a ruler and chalk that down before I stitch it, because I want it to be perfect. I want it to be perfect, perfectly straight. And make sure it's a basing stitch, really nice and loose basing stitch so it pulls out easily. Okay, so after we've done that, we've marked uh, both lines of the beginning and the end of all the buttonholes, then we'll go along and mark the center of each buttonhole all the way down the project. Make sure your lines are nice and long. Don't stop short. The longer the better, and you'll see why in a few minutes. All right, now to make the welts, in this particular case, I'm making a quarter inch welt, but in smaller buttonholes, you might have an eighth inch. But for this example, I'm doing a quarter inch welt and a one and a quarter inch a buttonhole. So what I've cut is a strip of the fabric that I wanna make the welts out of. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to interface that, other times it might not be necessary, you'll be the judge of that. Press it in half. Make this strip much wider than what you need because you're gonna trim it down later. So in this case, I only need quarter inch uh, welt, but I've cut the strip at one and three quarters. Pressed it in half. Now the next step is, because I know I want a quarter inch welt, I'm going to stitch with about a 2.5 stitch right down a quarter of an inch from the folded edge of my welt. Now the next step is, is to stitch another row of stitching exactly the same distance from this row as this one was from the fold. Quarter inch, quarter inch, but they do need to be precise. Then you're going to cut the welts with scissors and you're gonna cut right along that second row of stitching. And now you'll know you have a very accurate welt to work with. And what I want you to do is make a really long strip, longer than you need, and then cut this long strip down, and then determine the length of your welts, and then go down and cut each one separately. Now we're gonna position our welts where our buttonhole marking is. And you want to have it sticking out about a half an inch on either side of your welt. And you just wanna center that. Now this raw edge should lay right up against that stitching of the center of our buttonhole. Okay, so now what I want you to do is start right about in the center um, of the buttonhole, above the welt, right on top of that stitching that's still there. Okay, stitch now with a two point and the reason we're going down to a two-point stitch length is because, we, again, we want to be very precise. It's extremely important that we land precisely at the same spot on both sides of the buttonhole. Okay, so we're going to stitch right down here, right along there. And now I think I'm right at where I want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the foot and I'm going to turn my project and make sure that we're coming right down there. And we are. So now I know it's, I'm good to go to the other end. Now we're gonna do the same thing at the other end. One more stitch, I think. And let me turn and make sure I've got it in the right place. And I do. So now I'm gonna come back. Remember, don't back up, because backing up in this instance can take you off course just by a thread. But in a bound, bound buttonhole, that can make all the difference. All right. So there we have it. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the other welt on the other side and do exactly the same thing. I want you to see on this side how I can tell that I have that exactly on that stitching. If I don't, I'm gonna go back and fix it and make sure that I have it exactly at each end and the same thing when I go to the other side. Okay, so here I have one where I've already stitched both welds on and I've double checked and make sure that the stitching ends right at that previous stitching. Okay, so this is my basting stitching. I know it's blue on the right side and orange on the wrong side, but it's because I was just too lazy to change the bobbin. Okay, now what we wanna do is cut on that center line. I like to cut from the back, but you wanna make sure you pull those welts apart so that you don't snip on your welts. Just make a little snip right in the center. So I've just made a snip in the center. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go at an angle and I've got my fingers underneath here, pulling that welt apart, making sure I'm not cutting the welt. And I wanna cut right up to that stitching. Cut all four corners. So now we're gonna turn it. And when you turn it, before you turn it, pull the ends in and just slide it underneath, okay? And what you're gonna end up with is your welts on the other side and give it a nice press. Now, here's the last step of that buttonhole and that is, you see the buttonhole? We're gonna pull this back and you see that previous stitching, that basting stitching? I'm gonna stitch right on that and that's what's gonna give me that perfect uh, end on my buttonhole. But I'm gonna do one other thing. And that is, I'm going to stitch right across there. And then when I back up, I'm gonna do what's kind of a darning effect. So I'm gonna swing out and then swing back and swing back out again two or three times, just to make sure that that does not fray or come out. You do that on both sides. And then you pull your basing stitch and you have the perfect bound buttonhole.